listening to Footscray Live. My name is James, and with me I have Stanley, Hello. Marley, and Hi. Taylor. Hello. Uh, today we will be interviewing Dean Lombard, a local musician uh, and part of the band The Phosphines. How are you today, Dean? Yeah, not too bad. How are you guys doing? Yeah, pretty good, thank you. Yeah, yeah pretty good. Um, so you are a local musician. How did you get into music? Oh, I've been playing music all my life. I guess when I was a little kid, I used to play the recorder and the clarinet. And then when I was a teenager, I started playing bass and guitar and writing songs. And I've just kept on doing that for all the years since then. <laughs> right. What do, you, what do you reckon uh, growing up were some of your biggest musical influences? Uh, there's quite a few, actually. Um, in the early days, some of the bands I listened to when I was a little kid was like ELO from the 1970s and... Um, and when I got older, I got into bands like Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple, um, yeah, The Who, The Beatles, a lot of those sort of 60s and 70s bands, as well as some of the new sort of indie Aussie bands at the time, like The Go-Betweens and The Triffids. So, yeah, quite a, quite a big range, really. Mm. I'm Stanley here, and um, what was your first gig that you ever did, like, live? That I ever played? Yeah. That's a hard one, because I... My f- I I did a couple of like youth groups and that when I was a teenager because mm-hmm. the, um, the bass player in my band was in a, a few youth groups and sports clubs so we did that sort of thing um, and then when I, when I sort of left school I started busking, I used to busk a lot and then I'd get gigs in pubs and then just sort of kept going from there I guess. Um, you mentioned that you started off in youth groups, um, how did you start there and uh, how do you think it influenced you later in your music career? I, I, I mean, I, I wasn't in youth groups, but the bass player in my band was in youth groups. So we used to play sort of, uh, you know, they'd have socials and dances and, you know, get-togethers and that yeah. sort of thing. So um, the, the youth group really enabled us as a young, you know, a young just starting out band who's still learning their mm. craft. And it's not just learning how to play your instrument and sing. It's also learning how to be on stage as a performer. Um, and those youth groups, because um, they basically had a lot... They were there for young bands, so they were really good at helping us just to learn our craft in front of an audience that was, you know, that was one of us, so they were okay for us to be mm. up on stage sort of learning what we were doing and, you know, yeah. making mistakes and that sort of stuff on the way. Um, it's Molly here. What's the toughest part about being a musician? Ah, ah <laughs> there are lots of toughest parts. It's very hard to make a living from it. I don't make a living from it, um, although I treat it very professionally. I have another job I make a living from because it's very hard to make a living as a, as a musician. What's that job? Uh, I work as an energy policy advocate for an environmental organisation. So a lot of stuff with government and activism and advocacy. So that actually inspires my songwriting yeah. sometimes. But I think one of the other hard things about being a musician, especially when you're writing songs and performing them, is just keep you motivated because it can be disheartening when you write songs and you can't get gigs and you can't get them out there. So that can be really tough sometimes. Um, now that you mentioned you know, writing songs and performing and how difficult it can be, how long have you actually been working um, in the music industry or been working on your career for? Well, uh, pretty much since I was a teenager, when I started, when I started busking, that was actually yeah. when I first started earning my living from music. I used mm. to busk every night in the city when I was about 18. Um, and then I played in bands in the 80s and I took a bit of a break when in the... Uh, I, you know, I took a bit of a break for a couple of years and then I played in bands in the 90s quite a bit and then I took a bit of a break when I had young kids and I was raising them and then I got back into playing in the 2000s. So, um, yeah, just sort of continually off and on and there's been a few times when I pretty much earned my living from it but most of the time not. Um, now that you mentioned you had kids, uh, how has having kids influenced, like have you ever influenced your kids, you know, with your music? Are they music kids too? They are both musicians <laughs> uh, and artists. Uh, my son uh, is an animation, makes animation oh, wow. films. He just won an award actually for best animation. Well, that's oh, amazing. Wow. Yeah. Uh, my daughter's a composer and a musician. Um, I think I influenced them because they listen to the music I listen to. And, you know, I was always playing music at home, so to them music was natural. And in turn, they uh, influenced me because as they became teenagers and that, and I started to get a bit out of touch with modern music, like a, a lot of older people mm. do, they kept on introducing new music yeah. to me. So that helped me keep in touch with what was going on. That's been really important for me to keep on developing as an artist and not to just sort of stagnate. Um, is there any modern artists or genres that you've really looked up to recently? Um, I'm getting more into electronic music mm. in the last few years, which I never did, even though electronic <laughs> music was sort of big in the 80s when mm. I was a teenager. Yeah. Um, and I'm really interested in the sort of alternative sort of 
yeah. uh, power pop and sort of the rebirth, the sort of retro pop sort of scene. Yeah. I think some really interesting stuff. I really got into a band Totally Mild who came out a couple okay. of years ago um, who I found really inspirational. There's so much good music happening and I find myself listening more to, I guess, stuff that to me is more unconventional, sort of mm. more sort of spoken rather than yeah. sung sort of stuff. And Yeah. Mm. So, Dean... Um, you know, you were talking that uh, music has evolved a lot since the 70s and 80s, um, and it sure has. How would you describe your style of music? I always find it difficult to do that. Um, and also I play, I've got solo stuff I do and I've got the band stuff, and they're also different. As a solo artist, I used to be a bit more of a sort of folk sort of artist or folk rock sort of thing, and I think I still have some of that influence in what I do solo, though I'm doing a lot more rock and pop sort of stuff. Uh, my band, I think the closest I come to is sort of power pop, that sort of blend of rock and pop. But um, one of the things with my band is that, you know, and it's a great thing with bands, is that all of us have different musical influences and the band sort of blends them together. Like our bass player is really into prog rock in particular. Our lead guitarist is really into grunge. I'm, I'm into a lot of that sort of pop rock, like the, you know, Beatles and that, and the more modern power pop stuff. And blending that all together just makes really unexpected stuff. Mm, and... Um what sort of uh, gigs uh, would, you, would you normally do? Well, we normally do sort of uh, pubs or bars with the band where they have sort of live music quite a bit. Uh, so sort of stuff with sort of larger bars or smaller pubs, I guess, mostly. We've done a few festivals. Uh, as a solo artist, I've played a lot of smaller venues. There's a lot of the small local venues around here, uh, very small bars and cafes where I do solo stuff, sometimes just by myself, sometimes as part of a duo. Yeah. Um, now that you mentioned that you also, you know, play with your band alongside having a solo uh, music career, do you write songs for both the band and your own music? I just sort of write songs. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, oh, this is a band song, and sometimes mm -hmm. I know it's not. But more often I write a song and I might take it to the band and they might get into it or they might not get into it. If they get into it, it's a band song. If they don't get into it, then it's, it's a solo song. And I also do, uh, like I'm rec recording solo albums, I'm working on one at the moment. Uh, and I, I do that, I've got a home studio and I play all the instruments myself. So oh, wow. now I find that because I've got mm -hmm. a bunch of songs that I think are band songs, but that the band didn't get into, I'm, my next album is very focused on recording mm -hmm. a very full band sound, though as a solo artist, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm sort of going for. Um, yeah. Now they're talking about your solo career. Uh, you recently, or not recently, but you released your debut album in 2017, Bridesmaids. What was that like releasing your first ever album? Th as a, that was, yeah, that's my first solo album. That was really exciting and unexpected. I always wanted to. I'd been working on solo albums for several years yeah. before then, and I never got to the release point. And my partner finally sort of said to me, you should just do it. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to do a small one because it's like a five, I think a five or six track yeah. album. And I just thought, I'm just going to do it. I've got a whole lot of half-finished <laughs> demos and I'm just going to polish them up a bit and release it as a really sort of stripped back, unplugged style yeah. thing with a bunch of songs. Uh, and I actually, interestingly, for that album, all the songs I used in that were songs that I'd entered into songwriting competitions but hadn't won. Oh, I, I used to enter oh, songwriting yeah. competitions all the time and I, well, they all made the semi-finals and I never won. So oh, I'm like, no. that's why it's called Bridesmaids, right? Yeah. No, not quite there. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Um, so uh, as a uh, you know, professional singer-songwriter, what advice would you give to someone who wants to get into that business? Uh, probably keep working at it because it takes a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, also, you need to know people. You need to get out there and know people because oh if yeah. you want to get gigs or you want to, you know, get any sort of get your songs on radio, you have to meet people. So I always say to people, go out, go out and see other bands, get to know other musicians. Whether it's open mics or more sort of formal sort of gigs, just do it. C keep working at your own stuff. Play with other people because you get inspired by other people and you meet other people. And that's I think that's the best that's the best advice I can give. Um, now that you're talking about, you know, wanting to start your own solo career, um, I think, you know, again, like we mentioned, music has evolved so much in the past few decades. And I feel like, uh, you know, just tens of years ago, it was big labels who controlled everything. And now I think, you know, with streaming and, you know, the internet, anyone can access anything. I think it's a lot more easier uh, for people to actually get there and get recognized. Do you agree? Yeah, I think that's, that's the case. And there's sort of pros and cons with that because the advantage of the old big label system was mm. that they had lots of money and yeah. if they picked you, they'd really push you, right? Um, when you're yeah. operating as an indie, you don't have those resources, but it is much easier to do stuff like record, especially. Yeah. You still need to 
get decent microphones if you want to sound good, but you can now have a recording studio basically in your computer that you just connect microphones <laughs> to instead of a massive room with all this massive hardware. And that's made a real difference. Mm. It's made it, but that, that's, you know, I couldn't have recorded my solo album <laughs> if I didn't have, you know, a program I could put on my computer yeah. that could do all the mixing and everything. So uh, you've written quite a few songs. Have you ever written songs for other people? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Have I? Not really. Sort of a bit. Um, yeah, but not. Yeah, not. Yeah, not really. I've had other people like some of my songs and take them off and play them themselves. Yeah, but the songs I've written for other people have tended to be like, you know, oh, I'll write a song for someone's birthday, or I'll someone asked me, can you write a satirical song about such and such to the tune of such and such. So, but yeah, not much actually. I'd like to do more of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now they talk about songwriting. Uh, do you ever have a specific songwriting process or do they just come naturally and you write them down? Um, I don't have one process that works. I have lots of processes <laughs> that, that work. You know, sometimes I'll go, I'm going to write a song, I sit down and I work at it. Other times, some words or a, a tune or a riff just comes to me and I go, I've got to capture this. <laughs> uh, so there's lots of different ways. I think when I started out, it was, it was much more the inspiration thing. Mm. Oh, I'm feeling this thing. I'm going to try, I'm going to, write down the words mm. about how I'm feeling and then I'll make yeah. some music or oh, I've got this musical idea let me work on that and I'd go for months and months where I'd have no inspiration it's like oh the, the muse has left me you know but um, now I realise well yeah that's part of it but also you can actually just sit down it's like I have this skill I've learned yeah. of how to write words and music and put them together I'm going to sit down today and I'm going to write a song and I've I read an interview once with I think it was Stevie Wonder and he was just like every morning I just get up and before I have breakfast, I go and I write a song. <laughs> and 95% of them are terrible. But that, that's fine. I need to write all those bad songs oh, yeah, for sure. so yeah, that yeah, I can write good. the good song. Um, so a, uh, uh, another question that I had. Um, so you are a very local artist. Um, and you perform you know, solely in Melbourne, uh, solo and with your band at smaller gigs. Uh, have you ever considered um, you know, writing a few more albums and going on a tour? Yeah, we thought about it too. And like my, my band's got like three albums and we're working on a fourth and we've, we've, we've got the material. Uh, we have thought about going on a tour. Uh, there's, a, there's a few things that have stopped us. One is that it's a lot of organising to go on a tour and you need a lot of connections. We don't necessarily have those. Uh, the other thing is that we're not all professional musicians in the terms of that's our you know, career and our living. We all have other careers, other jobs. So it's, it's, it's difficult to do that for us, I guess. Um, it's something that we're still keen to do, and I'm really keen. I hope that we get there sometime to do it, but yeah, we haven't got there yet. Yeah. Um, now that you mentioned sort of connections and going on world tours, have you ever tried to actually um, submit something to any like label, like a bigger label that could get you there? Uh, I've submitted some stuff to some smaller labels mm. and didn't really get anywhere. <laughs> um, I've yeah submitted songs in songwriting competitions and had a bit more pickup mm. of that. Um, yeah, it's probably it's you know, it's not a thing I've really done that much. I guess I, I've really focused much more on the local scene, mm. on playing gigs in the in sort of Melbourne and yeah. the surrounds, and in yeah recording at home and in local studios and you know small runs of albums and trying to sell in the mm. local market. Um, yeah. Speaking of songwriting competitions, what's your opinion on TV shows? The TV shows that are highly produced. I like the voice and those sort of yeah. things. Uh, it's not my thing. I think they're very much focused on the, perf the performance rather than the material. Yeah. And for me, I mean, I've, I'm a writer and a, and a player. To me, it's been a lot more about the music. Performing yeah. is still a really important part of it. And I think one thing a lot of musicians need to learn is to put more attention on the performance because really a lot of people can write a great song and play a great song well. Uh, but the audience is there looking at the performer. You want to see something as well as hear something. I think that is important. But um, yeah. But yeah, I haven't watched those shows that much, and um, I guess I don't have much of an opinion. Yeah. Animus not really my scene. I guess uh, I, I think that, like a lot of songwriting competitions, the thing that they have in common with those shows is that they tend to end up gravitating towards more mainstream sounding stuff yeah. that everyone can yeah. like. And I guess I'm more interested in sort of pushing the envelope and doing stuff a bit different. And I think that's harder to get up on a show like that yeah. and it's even harder to get up in a songwriting competition because stuff that's sort of more edgy polarises people more whereas stuff that's sort of more mainstream and conventional everyone can appreciate yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. so just a bit of a question here uh, who out of all the musicians that you can possibly think of will you want to play with the most 
Ooh. Oh, man. I should have thought of these. <laughs> I haven't thought of these. Who would I want to play with the most? Interesting. Wow. I don't know. Um, I love the band Ockerville River. Mm. I would love to play with them. Uh, I think that our styles are a bit sort of compatible. I reckon I could totally support them on their next tour. But, um, yeah, they haven't got back to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that you mentioned other artists, have you ever, like, done a collaboration with another artist for a certain song or gone on tour with another band or artist? Yeah, I've done a, f a fair bit of that. Um, and, again, mostly through connections I've had. I've, like, filled yeah. in on on other instruments with some bands when, like, you know, their bass player wasn't around. Um, I worked a bit with the Fish John West Reject, who were a band that were quite big in the 90s, and I, I knew one of the guys in the band, and they needed, they did a bit of a reunion tour, and they needed a harmonica player, and their harmonica player was off on a boat somewhere, so <laughs> I filled in with them, which was great, and that was great for me, because I was a big fan of the band, yeah, so I was, like, playing with the heroes, <laughs> you know? And, yeah, I've done a bit of that working with other people on songwriting and on performing and you know one of the things we do as a band we know lots of other bands and we get mm. together we play at each other's gigs so there's a really collaborative spirit in the Melbourne music scene it's really good um so you know speaking of gigs uh do you ever you know uh really struggle getting gigs or you know uh, do you sort of just because you're a bit more um well known now in the neighborhood you kind of can get them more easily i'm not that well known in the <laughs> neighborhood uh it is really hard getting gigs sometimes um when you're doing in this game and trying to get gigs, you have to be prepared to get knocked back or even ign or ignored, which is even worse than being knocked back. I don't know if it's worse or better. But, you know, you'll send out emails, you make phone calls and never get back to you. It's just part of the game. You've got to keep going. I was talking to a guy I know who does tours up and down the East Coast and he was like, um, you know, in organising a tour, he contacted like 100 venues and like 15 got back to him. Oh, my God. You know, and he said that was a good hit rate. So yeah. you, need to, you need to expect that if you're doing, if you're doing this. Yeah. So, um, thanks so much, Dean. Before you head off, uh, we'd like you to perform a couple of songs yes. live here yeah. for us. Would that sure. be Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'd love to. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll just uh, give you a minute to set up. Awesome. All right. So, guys, um, have any of you ever thought of, uh, you know, becoming professional musicians? <laughs> yeah. Getting into the music I've considered industry. considered it, but <laughs> not really, no. Yeah. I'm not sure what? you can make a living out of it. Yeah. Oh, oh, for sure. I mean, I think, you know, it's a lot more difficult. Like, it, yeah. it's a difficult, you know, path to get into. I think the These music... These days especially. I mean, like I guess you could say that. But then again, I think with, like, the internet and streaming, it's a lot more easier to get noticed. But um, Spotify and Apple Music pay less than people true. buying a CD. And true. people aren't going to go out and buy a CD if they have it at their fingertips unless they really like you. Yeah, right. so like yeah. there's that one in a thousand yeah. that are yeah. really good. All right, guys. Uh, here is Dean, um, and he's performing a couple of songs for us. Woo, Dean! So, uh, so <laughs> yeah. what song are you going to be playing for us today, Dean? Oh, look, I'll start with this one. Uh, it's a bit of a slow, sort of quiet one. Uh, it's called The End of the World, which is a favourite topic of mine. It's so my, my fourth coming album is called Songs we from the End of the World because... You know, we need to be prepared. So, um, so I'll start with this one. Perfect. It will happen one day. When the ocean rises over the blue stones piled along the shore, will you be there holding my hand? As the esplanade takes its curtain call And when the bushfires reach Altona And mangoes grow by our back door Will you stare back at me in fear and wonder As the life that we knew becomes no more Yeah, will you stay with me Till the end of the world Cause there's no one I'd rather be scared with Be there with me When the bees have all departed And the flowers bloom no more Will you help me to remember 
All the beautiful things that we once saw Yeah, will you stay with me Till the end of the world Cause there's no one I'd rather be scared with Be there with me Things are changing Stay with me Till the end of the world Cause there's no one I'd rather be scared with Be there with me Thank you so much, Dean. Um, I think we might have time for, for one more song, if that's all right. One more, okay. Well, I'll, I'll get my Bob Dylan style harmonica and um, try this one. It's a bit more up, upbeat. That's still good. A, <laughs> still a slightly sad song, but also slightly happy. You know, some songs are sort of sad and happy. Yeah, this yeah. Is, this is about the whole sad, sad and happy, happy thing. It's called Fly time. Away. And this is actually a song I wrote about 20 years ago and forgot about. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Guy, local, another local guy, Don Rogers, who has a band called the Scray City Rollers, I've been playing with. He heard this song on my SoundCloud page and said, that's a cool song. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even remember I wrote that. So <laughs> I now could go on the new album. Here it is. It's called Fly Away. Let's go, Dean. Fly away. Fly away. The road you take and turns you right around Fly away Fly away Fly away Fly away There's sunshine in your eyes You see the sunny skies You're a flower Blooming brightly from the soil Of our goodbyes You're in a better place Don't you worry This time, my friend I won't give chase As you fly away Thank you so much, Thank Dean. You, that was incredible. Right. All right, that brings our show to an end. Thank you for joining us. My name is James. Uh, that was Dean Lombard. Today I was joined with Stanley. Hello. Marley. Hi. And Taylor. You're listening to Footscray Live. You're listening to Footscray Live.